HD SLR Shooter Special Coverage of NAB 2017. Sponsored by Akidio, Aperture, Atomus, Band Pro, Black Magic Design, Carl Zeiss, Light in Motion, Manios Digital and Film, Shape, Schneider, Sakonic, and Xylite. Hi, Clint with HDSLR Shooter, continuing our coverage of NAB 2017 at the Carl Zeiss booth with Snehal Patel. And Snehal, you guys dropped a bomb on NAB this year with a brand new successor to the CP2, and it's not just an improvement, it's, it's, a, major, it's a major deal. Talk about it. Yeah, um, thanks for saying that. Yes, uh, we tried to make a splash, and as you came into our booth, I think you saw that we have an artist that's actually painting a set of CP2 lenses, uh, our original, the one, the T2.1 line, um, and we're honoring them as we move on and discontinue the normal CP2 line to replace with the CP3 line. So we have all these painted glass that you saw, you know, when you walk in, it's really beautiful. Um, it really is to show that we're ready to move on because we've listened to customer feedback and we've created a new baby, the CP3 lens. Mm -hmm. So the CP3 lens, Compact Prime 3, has a lot of the same features that of course the CP2 had, but a lot of improvements as well. So of course you still have the interchangeable mount system. So I'm holding here an EF mount version of this lens, but I could take the mount off in a couple of minutes and switch it to PL, Nikon, Micro Four Thirds, or even E-mount for Sony. So all the same choices are available. Um, you have now lens support integrated into the bottom of the lens, which uh, before you had to have with the mount, which was very close to the body of the lens, not very easy to support over there. But now in the middle of the body of the lens, it's there. Um, the Just like uh, CP twos before, the CP threes have focus and iris rings in the exact same position as well. Mm -hmm. Now you notice that the lens it's a lot lighter. Yes, I did notice that. Yeah, yeah. and smaller as well. It has a front diameter of 95. Um, even the lenses that are 100 and 135 still have a front diameter of 95. They're just a little bit longer. Um, most of the lenses weigh almost the same. So that makes it easy for when you're using a Movi or a gimbal or something where you have to balance and change lenses. There's very slight balancing that has to be done, changing most lengths of these lenses. They're more consistent in T-stop which is actually, believe it or not, very, very, very important for cinematography because when you're on a set and you light it, you don't want to double the lighting or quadruple the lighting to take your extreme close-up or you know your extreme wides because your T-stop changed so much. So instead, we have the 15, a brand new 18, and a 21. So for the first three lengths of the lens, 15, 18, 21, the T-stop is T29. And from everything from 25 all the way to 135, it's T21. Hmm. So out of a 10 lens set, seven of, seven of them are T21 and three are T29. So very, very consistent over there. We also have new coatings on the lenses and new um, construction and design. So you're starting to see better micro contrast because um, you're going to see more levels of contrast essentially because we have different paint making it really dark inside. So there's no reflections or anything like that. And so with the new anti-reflective coating, mm -hmm. um, you're going to get a much better picture too. And if you believe it or not, you're going to see reduced uh, chromatic aberration and nicer image. Mm -hmm. So it, there is a little improvement, actually, mm -hmm. on the picture side from the CP2s. Um, and then aside from that, just the construction, and you see the It's rings. smooth. Oh, very smooth, right? It's like ultra prime style uh, dampening that's in there, so it really feels natural. They put the dampening that they put inside here. It's just, it, it doesn't uh, change when it gets hot or cold. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna feel like in the cold, it getting harder or anything like that and looser when it gets warm. It actually is very consistent. So that's what's really nice about it because now you can go out and be confident that look, I can go in any condition, anywhere, throw the lens up on a drone or you know on a frozen lake and my motors won't get stuck or anything like that. And of course it's hardy. Mm -hmm. So you can use electronic follow focus systems with it without any problem. And not only do you get all this great quality and, you know, affordability with this lens, but there's more. Okay, more? Yes. So beyond just having a regular version of the CP3, mm -hmm. which is exactly the same price point as our, you know, outgoing CP2s, we actually have, for a little bit more premium, the XD version of the lens. XD okay. means extended data. Extended data. Now, so this has a separate module on it. Yes, uh, not only does it have connectors in the back for the PL mount that communicate with the camera, but for those cameras that don't have that connection, it has an external port as well, which actually can work with monitors, cameras, a whole host of other devices. So 
if you take this lens and you put it on a camera that already has a, a, you know, the ability to connect to the connectors in the back, you're going to see some data already coming. So in the Alexa camera, for example, you're going to start to you're going to see the name of the lens, the serial number. Um, you're going to see the focus and iris marks moving, and that gets saved frame by frame automatically in the video files, just like a master prime lens would behave. Sure. Right, mm -hmm. um, and that is because we're communicating using the Cook slash I protocol, mm -hmm. and that protocol is open source, so we don't have to charge the licensing fee to our customers to utilize it. Plus, it allows us to add extra data. So the extended data is beyond focus and iris and hyperfocal distance, the typical stuff that you would usually get on a lens. And we're actually giving you distortion and shading information as well, so that for VFX compositing, any kind of uh, special effects or after effects work you do for commercials, you now can have distortion and shading removal. So you can actually take away some of the lens characteristics so that you can do your work onto the image. So in this case, what we're doing is showing you that we're taking the data out of here right now, right? Pointing it at this distortion and shading chart and going into the Master Locket Plus with this information. The Master Locket Plus is a new device by Ambient that actually reads our data from our lens and transmits it wirelessly while providing time code to the camera, transmits it wirelessly to your the DIT station. We now have Comfort software we're working with, and the new version of the Live Grade will automatically have lens correcting controls. So now you can see data coming in, so as I iris, or if I focus, you're gonna see the shading and the distortion data changing on screen in real time. And I can in real time actually take out the shading and the distortion so that I can see what it looks like. And then I can save this file. So either through LiveGrid, I can save a static file and through SilverStack, I could actually have a stream of data based on time code if I focus an iris during the shot, for example, so that my distortion shading changes. And now I could take the data and save it uh, by with time code frame by frame. And then we have a free plugin for Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, which uh, essentially allows us to take that same data file for that shot and apply it and now flatten or unshade a shot. So you would say, well, why would you do that? Well, it's because I want to avoid this. I, we don't want to see anyone ever shoot charts again if we could avoid it. It's a non-creative, technical thing it's that you fine. have to do. Time and money. Mm -hmm. And we're going to save you a lot of time and money because you're always going to have that data available. So yes, right now it takes a box, you know, like Ambient to pull that information. But it, very shortly, camera manufacturers, just like they can see the focus and iris data, and you know, on this red, you can even see the name of the lens and all that stuff. You'll also be able to see that other columns of data, which is your shading and distortion data. And they'll be able to save it frame by frame to the video files. And again, use the, you know, Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve uh, plugin with the video files directly. So you'll have many choices very shortly. We're already working with a lot of camera manufacturers and other partners as well. So there's a lot of different uses for this kind of technology. You can see like when you apply and remove, you can definitely see the characteristics of the lens. And then you start to understand that why we think certain lenses are pretty. We do want some kind of curvature. We do want some kind of shading. We want to focus more in the middle of the frame or just to the right or just to the left. We don't want to focus necessarily in the corners of the edges. So all the stuff that naturally happens with lenses are looks that you want to actually preserve. So in VFX, for someone that does high-end VFX, you know, they're not trying to get rid of the characteristics of the lens. So what our system actually allows you to do, and we, we shown in that little sci-fi piece that we did, was that we can go on set, we can take the data, right, of the, um, capture the data, we could unshade and undistort it, VFX can now create background plates at 180 degrees, put it in the green screen, and lay everything out. And when the final shot looks nice, they can now reapply the looks of the lens at the end so that the shots match. So the close-up that I have of you, and then we turn around to a VFX shot, we don't want those two shots looking different from one another. We want them looking similar. And you could do that because the characteristics come back. Some people might be thinking, well, that's more data than I actually need. But moving forward uh, at the rapid pace that we are, this is going to become the new normal, yes? Absolutely. It's been the new, it's been normal for still lenses in the digital space forever, mm -hmm. right? You, you can um, take any Canon camera or Nikon camera, put any of our lenses on that camera mm -hmm. and take a photograph and then you can go to, you know, a Photoshop raw editor or right. Lightroom and you could actually do that. You have to do that. When you do a panoramic shot and you take lots of plates, you have to take the shading distortion off. Otherwise you see the seams, right? Mm -hmm. Between each photograph. Yeah, Photoshop has like all the lenses there by their model and yeah. everything like that. And you know, a lot of that is static data. 
So what's better is we're giving you dynamic data as things change. So in cinematography, it's about motion. So we're not just giving you an overall, like at that moment, what the distortion shading is. We're, we're giving you the data of what happens the whole time. Are these going to be shipping very soon? or? Yeah, so basically uh, the CP3s themselves, the normal versions of the lens, uh, are going to be about the exact same price as the CP2 lenses that they're replacing. And they're going to start shipping in about June or July. And then we're going to uh, see the metadata version, the XD version of the lens, in about August or September. So later this year. And by that time, we'll probably have even more camera companies on board that have already kind of started taking the data in uh, and ingesting it so that you'll have a lot of choices of how you want to do everything. If you want to do it professionally and have a DIT and then send that data to them so that we, you can really review it, then you could have an external box like this. Or you'll be able to just save it internally and worry about it later through the camera. Or some cameras might give you live views and be able to change distortion and shading as well. So there'll be a lot of different choices of what you want to do. I think the the key thing here for people to think about is that all cinema lenses or so-called cinema lenses are not created equal and these are actually smart intelligent uh, and are future proof when you talk about getting a cinema lens or buying a whole a whole range of cinema lenses uh, as far as different focal lengths you need to be thinking about an investment that's you're going to be with you for a number of years and these are going to be locked in future proof for a long time it sounds like yeah and thinking and uh, talking about future proof we are gonna have abilities in this lens that you don't even know about yet. And the beautiful thing is, as soon as we release a different feature, or if something upgrades, you can actually upgrade the lens through the data port. Wow. <laughs> upgrade it to do what? I don't know, fly around or something like that. No, but there will be extra abilities actually because there's actually circuitry in here that we haven't even talked about yet. Mm -hmm. And you'll start to see in the future more and more things come out of it. And you are absolutely right in saying that metadata is important for the future because it's already there. Uh, you know, everyone's doing metadata on set. It's just that we didn't have a workflow from start to finish. And I think that the one thing that we did uh, correct was that we gave you the back end as well. So mm -hmm. from pre-visualization down to post, we have the workflow already. We proved it. We did that short little, uh, you know, sci-fi piece, mm -hmm. and you can watch in the BTS in one minute. You understand right away exactly how we did this process. Now, in the BTS, we were seeing uh, uh, DITs actually working with the footage as it was being shot, like like instantaneous. Now, it might seem far-fetched to some people, but the truth of the matter is, is that post is coming into the conversation of production right from the beginning. As a matter of fact, they're in the pre-production, so you know they're actually doing things on set, you know, at the same time. So not having to wait for that data and actually getting it live this is is uh, is kind of amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, beyond we've talked a lot about the technical aspects of the lens, we talked a lot about, you know, its capabilities and and uh, and the metadata, but let's talk a little bit about what does a Zeiss lens feel like? And when people think of a of a of a Zeiss lens and what what how would you describe the look? You know, it's um, that's a very interesting question because it's very subjective. Sure it is. Yeah, if I try to describe a look, um, maybe cinematographers might not agree with me mm -hmm. on what they think. So what I would say is that the kind of look that Zeiss lenses have is already well known and it's a known quantity because people have been using our lenses for cinema for the last over 80 years. So um, if you recognize and you have used Zeiss lenses, these will look very familiar to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they will definitely look more improved. Perceptually, it will look like they give you more resolution because it's actually they're more accurate now and there's better anti-reflective coatings and we talked about the micro contrast and all that. So I would just say that it'd be like a Zeiss look with some improvement. People want to find out more. What is the website they go to? Zeiss.com forward slash Cine, C-I-N-E. And we're going to have these videos up um, showing all the demonstrations of uh, the lenses in action. We have nice reels. One is um, a hairdresser reel that's uh, actually done in high speed with the Phantom, and it's absolutely gorgeous. We have some beautiful footage from an outdoor scene from the UK, which is actually an outdoor uh, uh, cinematography team that does um, commercials and things like that, doing some drone work. We have some. Uh, girl dancers from LA mm -hmm. shot with movie rigs and of course we have our sci-fi piece with the BTS as well 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Snail. HDSLR Shooters special coverage of NAB 2017. Sponsored by Akidio, Aperture, Atomos, Band Pro, Black Magic Design, Carl Zeiss, Light and Motion, Manios Digital and Film, Shape, Schneider, Sakonic, and Xylite. Thank you.